Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. I gotta fix the microphone there for a second. All right, there we go. <laughs> this is the privacy and the security editions. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We stream on several different platforms. Switch to linux.com slash live. We'll always get you the current video list of streaming links. You can have a look at the website over there. Of course, uh, over on the website and in the description of the video, you will find a list of all of the articles that we have. And so we're going to get jumping right on in here. Um, this is a, uh, a little bit of a follow-up update to the Encro chat. If you don't remember, Encro chat was supposed to be a uh, really a crime syndicate private based cell phone company that alleged to, you know, completely anonymize you everywhere. Well, the police got in there and unveiled some malware that allowed them to steal a lot of data and track people for a long time. And so, of course, the service collapsed and then they ended up arresting, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of criminals around the world who are using this. And I, it's a great thing to get the criminals off the street. But the way the police did it is raising some questions that may actually allow them all to walk free simply because it's uh, um, the way they did it. They didn't have any warrants on any of it, and uh, they also didn't. Um, uh, they didn't have warrants, and they didn't have um, uh, a clear understanding of what they were doing. They didn't have just cause for what they were doing, and one court ruled that yeah, their cases could proceed. But then they tried to use that same court case as precedent for an extra thousand people, and. Uh, no, it was, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was around 1,000 or so people. And then eventually the lawyers started saying, you, no, you can't do this. There was no cause. Um, there was no cause for, um, for what's going on here. And so this is uh, going up to like the Supreme European courts to decide. And if they decide that the police kind of acted in bad faith here, it could throw 60,000 investigations in the trash can um and so that's uh something to keep in mind so not really cool but um there you have it right all right uh meta is dealt another uh blow by the eu uh and this could result in forcing everybody's data to be opt in for personalized ads now once again i'm going to declare what i had mentioned before uh, saying that uh, one of the big challenges that I think we get is we start thinking of the data being collected as targeted ads is like the worst thing ever. And I don't think it is. I haven't seen an ad for a long time. In fact, as of right now, I'm on The Guardian, and right now uBlock has blocked 21 different blocking scripts here. Privacy Badgers got down three. So I'm not really seeing the ads here, okay? I don't really care. And uh, the way my network is set up, they really can't track me anyway. But the real problem isn't that they're going to show me personalized ads. It's everything else that they're going to be doing with that data. It's like the personalized ads is that smoke. Screen. Oh, good. We're not using my personal data for ads. We're just using it for everything else nefarious under the sun. And uh, that really is the problematic thing. Of course, I, again, Meta is one of those companies I just will have nothing to do with. And in fact, uh, I was chatting with some folks from uh, the local church out here about this the other day. And they're like, well, what's, what's so wrong with this? I said, look, when you're a computer company and your address is one hacker way, I don't want to connect my net computers to your network. Okay, just telling you that right now, because that is it. You can see these, these uh, three unscrupulous dudes hanging out in front of the Meta sign here. And literally this sign sign back here is one hacker way. That is their address. And you guys want to connect all your computers to one hacker way. You enjoy yourself. I'll be moving on to the next story now. All right. Police in China can track protests by enabling alarms on hike vision software. So, of course, it's a big uh, ca uh, camera. This type of camera is banned to use in the United States <laughs> as of now. Um, but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background of this camera that can do alarms indicating ca crowds, uh, uh, gathering crowds to disrupt order in public places, unlawful assembly, procession, demonstration, and threats to petition. So anytime these cameras detect stuff like this, it alerts the police, and then they can go out and 
you know, um, pull out the Gestapo or, you know, anymore what they'll do is they'll just turn all of their, their Kufi detectors to red and everybody has to scatter inside or be, you know, be, be hauled off by dudes in white suits. <laughs> Isn't this an interesting, interesting timeline for reality? All right. So findings come a month after mass protests against the zero countries, zero Kufi Kufi policies erupted in uh, across China. The demonstrations resulted in government easing restrictions. Many protesters later received calls from police. Uh, of course, these are cameras used um, by the Uyghurs um, uh, or against the Uyghurs, rather, to identify uh, people engaged in, in wrong think and wrong religion. And the cameras actually have ways to detect uh, types of uh, types of gatherings. It can tell if you're gathering to have a religious service or if you're gathering to engage in something else. They said here the Fulong Gong and religion alarm were removed from the website with no explanation. Whoops. <laughs> I have no idea what a Fulong Gong is, but I kind of want one now. You know, it's a Fulong Gong. <laughs> <laughs> signals the call to worship, I guess. I don't know. Um, but uh, this is something to be aware of, that China is doing this, and our current administration here in the United States is actually really interested in uh, implementing these types of technologies, and these are things that we have to keep in mind. And uh, moving on, um, crooks have had access to the medical records of 42 uh, million Americans since 2016. Number of hacks on healthcare organizations have doubled. So we have here a chart for our, starting from 2016 up to 2021. Uh, we have the number of ransomware attacks um, uh, is over on the uh, on the left axis there. So um, I don't know if that's is that just like only 90, 91 actual attacks? Or is that 91? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, the number of attacks is going up. But then the exposed personal health information, uh, this is in millions. So starting in 2019, these hackers, as they were in there, they started stealing the health information. And this is the information that you don't want stolen because it can't really be changed. It can't really be altered. And once somebody knows this, it is something that they have about you. And this is why I take a very strong stance. I do not want, I do not go to doctors because they want to put everything in digital records. No, I'm done. No, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. When I can find a doctor who doesn't put everything on digital records, maybe I'll consider going and getting a checkup, maybe from the neck up. But uh, the reality is, these hospitals have no idea how to administer it. You see hospital chains like UPMC coming in, and there's a few other ones in the country buying up every hospital, turning medicine into just for-profit business, and let's scrape as much money as we possibly can out of people. They cut every corner and cost that they can. They are not paying good inf inf uh, information security, and it just completely exposes every bit of health information, which then can be used. I mean, w what if... Uh, uh, what if the people buying the stuff on the black market is really the health insurance companies? Can you see a scenario where they might want to do that? Yeah, probably. Uh, let's make sure all the records are sound. And this is just part of the giant health scam of the United States. Um, and I would love to trust the system. The problem is, uh, the problem is, um, uh, what do you do about it? You know, you go in, I, I mean, I, I remember I, I went in like uh, I needed to get uh, I need to go in and see somebody about like one prescription or something at uh, one point in time. And so I hunted around to find somebody that didn't have like a three week waiting list because I needed to get in and get out. So I find a company. I was very clear, you know, don't uh, don't send me text messages. I don't play that game. All stuff. stuff. Like, oh, you, you're late for your update. Like, screw you. I'm just going to call them back next time they text me to call them back and start screaming profanities at them and tell them, I don't know who that person is, whatever else, because holy hell, I told you don't do that. And this is, this is what they want to do because it's like one track mind. These, and these are the morons putting all of our health information in computers, which is cost you know, millions and millions of people's private health information to leak. And that's problematic. So, of course, the last thing we want to do is um, engage in some type of uh, system that's going to intentionally put things like, you know, our urine fingerprint on the Internet. So 
Withings you scan uh, puts urolysis in your toilet and can recognize the signature of a stream. So, I mean, you can be like, hey, we got four different people. All right, little Johnny, go in here and pee on the thing, and we're going to set you up in the app. <laughs> And now little Johnny's health information is going to be going over. At least you'll be able to track it on your phone if he's been drinking one too many sodas, right? Um, so this thing here, uh, it can measure the flow. Ooh. It can measure the flow, and then it does. Uh, it recognizes the signature of the stream. Of course, it syncs everything up to your app, which means it's got to go up to their data servers. So now some company out there is holding access to your private health information about how you pee and how long or, or how healthy that pee happens to be. Um, and so now uh, this is a uh, unveiled at CES. Um, you know, the information is delivered to your iPhone or Android device on uh, um, uh, with Bluetooth, uh, with either Bluetooth or basic wireless signals. Of course, it goes into their app. Uh, here's their uh, their website. The first hands free connected home urine lab. Well, I hope it's hands free, although they did say that since you do have to get here and change the the cartridge uh, like every three months or so. And you actually have to bat. This thing has a USB battery charger. So you got to pull this thing out of the toilet and charge it every now and again. They're like, since you have to pull it out and replace the cartridges and charge it, we've given you a pair of gloves with it. Well, thank you. I appreciate the pair of gloves. You splurged greatly on my, what, $700 thing. Um, so you can enter your email address here if you want to be the first to know how to get your pee sent to the internet. So the things in here. Now, I'm wondering what in the world is going here? Because you literally have to pee on this cartridge. Um, shouldn't this be on the back of the toilet? I mean, I don't know how girls pee. Uh, but a guy ain't going to pee right there. That's the good news, right? Uh, okay. Um, it gives you a precise snapshot of the health metrics straight, straight from home. Um, so oh, here it is. Look at this. The, the U scan cartridge. Ooh, it goes right on in. And then of course, here's, here's some of the things we get. Oh, we got some articles. Here's a log. Tell us how you feel. Oh, take an ovulation test with U scan too. Look at this. Uh, there's your cycles. Here's the P stuff. Assess your nutrition with U scan. Oh, look at this. Uh, today we've had four out of seven days. Good nutrient balanced. Oh, look at this. You've only had five out of eight glasses of drinking water. If we need you to, to do that. And then here's your above, your balance, and your below. Here's your stable acid, your increasing ketones, all this kind of stuff. God, I must be on the keto diet. I don't know. Uh, you can fill out the form and uh, you can get your own uh, urinalysis thing and get all of your uh, your pee data um, stored up on the Internet. Does that not sound awesome? Well, we do have affiliates today. We are highlighting A2 hosting. If you're in need of a website, you might also want to lock in uh, the lower prices of websites. Uh, take advantage of these introductory deals because cPanel C pricing went up again. My own personal cPanel hosting for my clients went up $5 per month this month. Um, and so as long as you can keep getting the good prices, because hosting is going to start getting more expensive. Uh, one guy did the analysis. They found since 2018, cPanel raised its prices uh, 204%. That is eventually going to eat into the profits of these web hosting companies who now are on these. Um, and so you have to uh, keep account of that. So as long as you can lock it in and you can do uh, you can buy up to two or three month plans on a2 hosting at a time. TLM.li forward slash A2H if you're in need of a website or uh, if you are hosting a website and you've been having issues, you want to migrate. If you already have a cPanel account and you want to migrate to A2 hosting, it is as simple as the click of a button for them. Usually it is a free charge. Uh, you can talk to them about that, um, but uh, you can definitely have a look at what they have to offer and uh, see what you have from there. All right, guys, uh, we're going to jump on over into security news now. And uh, first up in security news is another update to LastPass. Yes, more leaking data. Now, this is an up, uh, a lawsuit. So one customer from uh, the LastPass uh, claims that they lost $53,000 that they can tie to this Bitcoin breach. Because uh, remember the LastPass, this breach occurred in 
August. And they were peddled back in August like, oh, we had a little breach and they got a little bit of stuff, but they didn't get any personally identifiable information. Well, August, September, October, November, December, January, four, five months now is now just last week we found out that, oh, they actually did get unencrypted every email address you're using, unencrypted every website you're using, unencrypted everything on every site you're using with the sole exception of the password. In fact, I was looking around at uh, some other password managers and uh, there's another one, uh, another self-hosted open source one called Passbolt, which actually uses a similar model. I was looking at it. Hey, is this a, a good alternative to Bitwarden? Because of course, Bitwarden seriously cripples your self-hosted installation and on your self-hosted installation, you still have to give Bitwarden personal identifiable information, which is why I'm not going to recommend Bitwarden under many circumstances. I don't want to give them any information. And so I looked into Passbolt. Well, Passbolt stores everything unencrypted except the password. And that's exactly what LastPass did. So it makes me wonder if they, uh, if they're using a a similar, uh, similar code base. And so, uh, because that information leaked out and this guy's like, yeah, okay, well they got some stuff, but nothing there. He's basically claiming that LastPass waited so long to unveil what was actually out there that somebody was able to get the information that leaked out of the LastPass account and steal $53,000 worth of Bitcoin because he was not aware of, uh, the depth of the leak. And then there's been several other uh, suits, including a uh, class action uh, lawsuit complaint against it as well. Because what was really leaked out of LastPass is everything. Everything. The only saving grace is that the um, the uh, password vaults are encrypted. But if it's something that can be easily guessed, like something they already know about you because people reuse passwords, guess what? Now they have everything, absolutely everything. And uh, that is what the update to LastPass is. we got to move a little bit faster here. I don't, don't want to spend that long on, on all these. Um, it's another day. There's another uh, 30 WordPress uh, vulnerabilities. <laughs> Good thing our new website is no longer WordPress. Bonus! Got off of that. Um, so 30 vulnerable outdated WordPress plugins and themes to deploy malicious JavaScripts. This uses the Linux backdoor. I believe we talked about this one not too long ago, but this is uh, specific plugins actually identified. Uh, this article, and we're not going to read all of these because this article is in um, the, the show notes. You can find that over at the website. Um, but I am going to identify um, one of them. WooCommerce is on the warning list. That is one of the biggest WordPress plugins being used. WooCommerce is on the warning list. Um, Visitors of compromised pages are redirected to malicious sites using malware to serve phishing pages. Researchers spotted a more recent version of the malware that exploits exploits vulnerabilities in the following. Uh, WooCommerce is among them. WordPress coming soon page. WordPress theme. uh, One tone. Any simple fields WordPress plugin. Um, WordPress, uh, deluxe SEO, um, uh, Weepymatico RSS fetcher, rich plugins. And then there's another, um, oh, there's a quick booking manager. Uh, we have uh, Google code inserter, um, chat support plugins. And there's a couple, uh, there's a couple of, um, um, uh, uh, maintenance uh, coming soon in maintenance page plugins as well. This is a major one. If you're running WordPress, you probably have one of these th- things installed. Uh, get off of WordPress. There's uh, my advice to you. Um, but uh, just be aware of that. Uh, Netgear had several firmware patches in um, uh, in a few different um, a few different uh, devices. So have a look over at Netgear's page get the updates for this. Uh, and some of these are, are fairly new. Uh, one of these is actually a, a, a modem that I have my eye on, and that's the Nighthawk um, because uh, it is a SIM-enabled modem router system. I could use it uh, in the van as a backup, and it has uh, external uh, antenna setup. So I've been keeping my eye on those. 
Um, but uh, this is some modern stuff. So if you are using Netgear uh, routers, go ahead and uh, have a look over at their site and see if there is firmware to install. Um, another Linux malware used to deploy Coin Miner. Um, this one is doing dictionary attacks against open SSH servers. Um, this was funny. I did earlier this week, I did the video on Kodashi Linux. And uh, one of the things Kodashi Linux does is it has an SSH server enabled and listening, and it has a root password that can't be changed because many of the scripts inside of it use that password. Um, and so uh, people are like, you know, oh, this is great. No, um, Kodashi Linux is a radically insecure thing. Um, this malware, if they could literally probe servers and infect every Kodashi Linux with this, if not, like if you're installing it, that's really bad. But if you are doing even a, a, um, a self-hosted or a, a, not a self-hosted, a, a live key, it could actually infect it for the period of time that you're running your device. Um, just something to keep in mind. Now, the good thing is if you are using that as a live key, it's going to reset itself every time. Uh, but this basically looks for open SSH servers and does dictionary attacks. If you have easy to use, easy to use, easy to guess passwords, uh, you are probably going to be hosting some uh, coin miner if you have open SSH ports. So keep those SSH ports closed unless you are actively using them for specific purposes. All right. Uh, well, we have uh, another day, another Windows malware. This is another vital Windows tool ab being abused to sideload malware. Uh, so we actually covered one of these the other day that was using, I forget which plugin it was, I think it's Notepad or something. Uh, this one is actually exploiting the Windows error reporting tool. You know that stupid tool that's like, something goes wrong, we're going to send Microsoft information. Like, no, shut up, go away. Um, yeah, you don't have much choice. Well, what this does is they actually distribute on a file, an ISO file, um, which... If you execute the ISO file is going to mount itself as you know a separate drive letter, and then it's going to grab an Excel file, a uh, fault rep DLL, and it's going to grab a um, a non-viral copy of where fault. And then what happens is if you open up the Excel file, it executes the where fault program, which is the legit one, so it bypasses malware. Uh, malware scanning tools, but then the fault rep DLL, which is in the same folder with it, is malicious, and that's going to open up and execute a sideloading um, variety of different malwares. So be careful if uh, somebody's sending you um, ISO files in your email, uh, don't mount them into your server. That would be crazy. Well, if you'd like to help support the channel, we do have a locals community, switch to linux.locals.com. You can jump on over there and uh, you can join us over there. And uh, over there, you guys got a uh, preview on the next tinfoil hat time video, which is going to be premiering um, on January 7th. So uh, you guys have already seen that and can watch that already. Uh, although it is a better uh, up-to-date copy that is rolling out. But over there on Locals, you can uh, find the information over there at switchtolinux.locals.com. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.